In today's A-level and IB video, we're going to be looking at stem cells. Now, there are two types of stem cells, embryonic and adult stem cells, and you find adult stem cells in bone marrow and in the skin and the liver. Now, these are cells which are able to regenerate over your lifetime so that they can produce new cells which carry out the same function. And notice that this is characteristic of adult stem cells they can only carry out a single function. They cannot change their functionality or become specialized in any other way. Many organs in the body do not contain stem cells. So your brain, kidney, and heart, for example. And that's why it is very dangerous when these particular organs become damaged because they have no ability to regenerate themselves, which is why we have to look to alternative ways in order to fix any problems with these organs. So that could be something like dialysis with kidney malfunction or it could even include organ transplant. Now the reason we're so excited by the notion of embryonic stem cells, so stem cells found in embryos, is because they have the ability to specialise into any type of cell, which makes sense really, because we know that when the sperm and the egg meet at fertilisation to form the zygote, that zygote divides by mitosis to form the embryo, and then over the next nine months, the next nine months of gestation period, that embryo has to go on and become a whole human baby. So that means there have to be cells present in that embryo that can go up and form cells that form the eye, form hair, form skin, etc. So embryonic stem cells are very exciting because they have the potential to specialise and differentiate into many cell types. So my camera cut out in the middle of my recording, so I'm just having to carry on where I left off. So remember that embryonic stem cells are stem cells found within embryos and they have the ability to differentiate or specialise into any type of cell. So in terms of treatment options, so it's therapeutic uses, these are extreme. Think about it if you needed to replace some bone cells, some bone marrow cells, hair cells. Embryonic stem cells have the ability to differentiate into any of these cell types. However, there are many, many issues with using embryonic stem cells. From an ethical point of view, the problem is they come from fetuses which have either been aborted or miscarried. So to actually ask a parent to give permission for the embryo to be used in this way is obviously very difficult. However, many people argue that embryonic stem cells should be used in this way and this would be their argument. Firstly, that at the early stage of embryo development, they're little more than a ball of cells and that they are yet to develop the essential features of human life. So are they really alive? Do they really count as humans? Secondly, early embryos do not have a real nervous system which has been developed fully, so can they actually feel pain? The answer is no, so therefore is it unfair to use them in this way? By the way, these aren't my opinions, these are just some various arguments for and against the therapeutic use of embryonic stem cells. Thirdly, an argument is that if you were to produce embryos deliberately, then no individual is being denied the chance of life because the embryos have been created specifically for therapeutic medicinal uses. And then lastly, one other source of embryos is IVF, which is in vitro fertilisation, when you gain an egg and a sperm and you cause them to fertilise effectively in a petri dish outside of the female's body. Now many of these IVF embryos never actually get used, so isn't it better to use these embryos in order to produce stem cells in order to save lives than to allow them to go to waste? It's up to you, but you do need to be prepared to argue your point. So now we need to look specifically at how we use stem cells and we're actually looking at adult stem cells in order to treat disease, starting with leukaemia. Leukaemia is a cancer of the blood and what happens is that white blood cells raise to an abnormally high level. What you can do in this case is use a needle normally poked into the pelvis in order to obtain bone marrow stem cells. Now these stem cells are stored usually by freezing and remember these stem cells because they're adult stem cells will only have the ability to make more white blood cells. At this point we use chemotherapy drugs in order to kill all the cancer cells of the bone marrow and that will include healthy cells as well. So although we've removed the cancer, the problem is the person has no way of creating new white blood cells. At this point you can reintroduce the stem cells which you froze back into the patient's body and then they can start producing white blood cells normally without any cancerous cells and this has proved a very effective way of treating leukaemia. A second example is Stargardt's macular dystrophy. 
What happens here is that there's a recessive mutation in the gene ABCA4. Now this causes a membrane protein responsible for active transport within the retina to misfold, so it can no longer carry out its function properly, and over time this can lead to a gradual degeneration of a person's vision and they can sometimes even go blind. Now there was some success initially using stem cells from mice, but more recently, stem cells were obtained from an embryo and implanted into a woman's eyes who was suffering from Stargardt's macular degeneration. Now, these cells remained in her eyes for the duration of the four months trial and actually it was found that her vision improved and that she was no longer blind. So embryonic stem cells have been proven very successful in the treatment of this sort of macular degeneration. <laughs> <laughs>